Good evening and welcome to Greater Somerville for October 2nd, 2018. I'm Joe Lynch. My guest tonight, in her fifth appearance here on Greater Somerville, is the state representative from the 34th Middlesex District, Representative Christine Barber. Christine is in her second term in office. She is running for re-election in November. She's a member of the Committee on Financial Services, Committee on Housing, the Committee on Labor and Workforce Development, the Committee on Environment, Natural Resources and Agriculture. She is also the House Vice Chair of the Massachusetts Caucus for Women Legislators and the House Democratic Member of the Massachusetts Autism Commission. It is my pleasure to welcome her back on a fancy new set with yes. colors behind us, State Representative Christine Barber. Thank welcome you. back. Thanks, Joe. Thank you so much for having me. It's always a pleasure to be here and glad to be here we this get fall. To, we get to know each other during mm -hmm. election time, mm -hmm. but we've seen each other many, many <laughs> times before. So one thing I neglected to say is that your district is parts of Somerville and parts of Medford. Right, right, right. right. How are things on the Hill? Uh, things are very always very interesting on Beacon Hill. So as you know, it's an election year. I'm running for my third term and I have an amazing district and people are very active. I get um, lots of emails, phone calls, people visiting at all times of year. So I've been hearing a lot from my constituents, uh, which is great. And there's never a dull moment. So I know you have, um, there's a plateful. I do follow you on Facebook. I mm -hmm. follow and get Twitter. updates. I'm on Twitter, Twitter too. And I get a lot of updates via your office and mm -hmm. stuff. So I know what you've been working on, but I'm gonna let you talk about that. But I, I do think there is an issue of the day. And one of the, one of the um, institu not institutions, but one of the um, caucuses that you represent is the women legislators. Mm -hmm. In light of what's been going on in Washington with the Kavanaugh confirmation hearings, can you tell me or tell the audience what you've been hearing on Beacon Hill when it comes to the Kavanaugh confirmation? Yes, yeah, certainly as, as, uh, ev as has been everywhere, it is what we're all talking about now topic. and what everyone is looking at. Um, and especially um, in the caucus of women legislators, we've been talking with staff and with other members about it. Um, and I'm really, I'm listening to what I'm hearing from my constituents and what they're uh, saying. There's been, again, a lot of activism, a lot of people really um, standing up and listening to what the survivors are saying. Um, and I, I'm hearing mostly that people are really glad that there is an FBI investigation going on and that some time is being taken to look at that appointment, which is obviously critically important for so many reasons. Um, healthcare, but also beyond to a lot of different issues. But being in politics, it, you know, it's a highly charged, mm -hmm. very, very highly charged discussion yeah. that's happening. Here in Massachusetts, we had a somewhat different type of um, sexual harassment allegation about the, with the former Senate right. president. Right. Um, and I think by people, you know, people watching what took place with uh, Stan, Senator Stan Rosen, Rosenberg, mm -hmm. what took place with him, um, Massachusetts does not tolerate. Massachusetts mm -hmm. politics does not tolerate it. Massachusetts itself does not tolerate it. So I'm just gonna leave it there. I know that you, you're in a lot of discussions with constituents right. and with other state reps. So carrying the banner in the Women's Caucus, good well, luck. Thank you, and it's great. I mean, again, people have been so active. We've gotten a lot done, but because people have been you know, calling on us to do that. So really appreciate all of that. Terrific. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of a chance. This is your re-election run <laughs> here on Greater Somerville, but you do not have an opponent. That is true. You do not have an opponent. And for those of you who are wondering why our state delegation is coming in so late <laughs> is because they were all gracious enough to agree and say, look, there's a lot of contended races out there. Mm -hmm. um, we'll come in in October. So, Well, thank you for having me. Yes, but it. Christine, you were the first one out of the box saying, <laughs> when can I come in? And yeah. I said, how about yeah. after yeah. Labor Day, yeah. after the primaries? Mm -hmm. That stuff is done. You are here. Let's hear, and your constituents here, some of the priorities that you've been working on in the past sessions. Yes. Um, so as I mentioned, there's been a lot around um, women's rights and women's health. We've passed a law to provide um, birth control without a copay for all um, people on any kind of insurance. And a number of other bills that the Women's Caucus has focused on. 
Of course, one of my main issues is housing and affordable housing, which, as you know, is a critical, uh, really important issue here in Somerville and in Medford. I'm on the housing committee, so there's been a lot of work that we've been able to do. Um, we passed a, a big housing bond bill, which basically reauthorizes all sorts of state accounts to pay for affordable housing. Some of the restorations work for brownfields and things like that all over the state. So it's over a billion dollar housing bond bill. Um, and I'm hopeful that some of that will come to Somerville for some of our, for our affordable housing and other housing uh, development. Um, there's much more work to be done there. Um, it's the kind of thing where, you know, you take all, any good idea out there about housing, I am willing to listen to because there is a lot to be done. But housing is definitely an important one. Um, and I've also been working on gas leaks, which uh, sadly has been in the news also with the disaster in Merrimack Valley a few weeks ago. Um, if I remember correctly, though, Christine, this is not new for you. Right. You've been working on it for right. a few years Right. So I've now. been working on gas leaks and, um, and looking at how gas leaks in our you know, old infrastructure actually release a lot of methane gas and greenhouse gases. Um, there's been some great advocates, mothers out front here in Somerville. And the heat activists in Cambridge have been great in raising awareness about gas leaks in our community. Somerville has a lot of uh, gas leaks um, that need to be fixed. So I did get uh, a small piece of legislation uh, passed this year about uh, monitoring and getting gas companies to start reporting more on gas leaks. So it's a step. There's more to do. But it also gets the Department of Public Utilities, the regulatory arm, more involved in gas leaks. Um, but now, you know, it's always a, a multi-pronged issue of safety, so we don't see anything ever happen again like what happened in Merrimack. And the right companies being regulated. Exactly. So the safety is, uh, you know, these are private companies, but mm -hmm. DPU is the public regulator. Public Utilities. Yep. yep. Department of Public Utilities. Um, it is challenging to follow their hearings and their regulations, so to try to get more uh, transparency about what these companies are doing, make sure we have enough inspectors, make sure the safety is there. Do they, uh, excuse my ignorance on this, do they self-inspect? I mean, I don't think the municipalities inspect gas lines right. underground, right? right? Right. So the companies do inspect, but then DPU, the, the state does have inspectors. Um, there was just a, a story in the news that they don't have their um, I want to say down to two or three inspectors because of a number For the of retirements. State. So they're trying to bring more on board, but there's more that needs to be done to make sure safety is is you know guaranteed for our communities. What's that old saying? If you ignore, if you ignore the old clunker car, right. you're, you're going to pay for it yeah. sooner or yeah. later. Yeah. yeah. Um, so there's a lot more to be done there, but. I'm hopeful we're going to be having more conversations about holding these companies accountable also as ratepayers that we're not on the hook for all of these investments that you know shareholders and those companies that do very well or are, are also um, really investing in our communities. So that's for next session and I think there's a lot to, to do there. Governor Charlie Baker says that he's got a billion dollar surplus in some of his most recent uh, re-election campaign ads. Mm -hmm. Is that a believable number or is that fuzzy math? Um, it, there actually is a surplus. Our tax revenues have been coming in higher than expected. Um, I, we're not, we never are sure at this part of the year if that will hold. Um, and there's a lot of accounts that have not been paid out yet that I would like to see, make sure uh, the, the right organizations get the money before we're spending kind of on new things. Um, but yes, there is, we're in a okay tax at the moment. Nice segue into me, uh, not a sandbag question, <laughs> but something else that you've been dealing with and we've been dealing with here in Somerville is the uh, Green Line extension, yeah. the rapid construction yeah. pace that they're keeping to. Um, you know, in one sense, uh, Christine, there's a lot of people in Somerville and Medford who are smiling because they can see progress on yeah. the Green Line. There's another whole section that um, we're taken aback yeah. by the clear cutting of the vegetation along the tracks. They're calling for hearings or a change. There's another um, a very vital component that is integral to the construction of the Green Line, which is the Ball Square Bridge, which saddles both Medford and Somerville. 
they will be closing that bridge. The last update that I got from attending one of those meetings is January of 2019. It will be closed for a minimum, what they are saying, of a year. Mm -hmm. That'll affect people on the Medford side of the city line, um, down into the Tufts area, down into the, I usually call it Harvard Square, but where Harvard Street and Main mm -hmm. Street mm -hmm. meet, mm -hmm. um, South Medford, yes. Ball Square, uh, yeah. yeah. So if you want to take that away um, <laughs> and say, Somerville, you're not alone. Medford is right. feeling, the, oh. feeling the pain as well. So, so yes, uh, we've been waiting for the Green Line extension for years, going on you know, decades. Um, and so there's some good parts, a lot of good things about it being built and being built rapidly. On the other hand, communication and um, you know, back and forth with residents has not nearly communication from the GLX communication team. from the GLX team from the contractors who are right. doing the work um, has not nearly with residents has not been nearly where it needs to be. And there's a lot more we are working on to try to push that to improve because people need to know when trees are coming down, when there's going to be construction outside their house, um, how long, you know, really inconvenient or, you know, questionable um, construction is going to be happening, and I, and I think that's not happening now. Um, I will, so my district is Medford as well, so the, the other side of Ball Square in Medford, South Medford, is, is my district, believe me. They're also unhappy. You've so been hearing this about is it, not, haven't yes, you? Yes, I hear about it from both sides. Um, it's not an easy situation, and I always say, you know, urban transportation projects, there is nothing more complicated. We have thousands of people who go through this city and Medford every day, and we're, we're putting through a major new transit expansion, and, um, and it, there are a lot of challenges there, so we have to keep communicating. Um, on Ball Square, you may know um, the, the so the delegation, so Senator Jalen and Rep. Provo and uh, Rep. Connolly and I wrote a letter uh, trying to work on a shuttle bus to bring people around the construction that will close Ball Square. It's not a magical fix, but we're really worried about pedestrians, about people who can't, you know, get around that area. Mobility, Mo mobility. impaired folks. Right, yeah. right. Um, you know, it will be painful for for those of us who have to drive around, but. You know, it's a safety issue. It's a much different issue for people who are who are walking. So I don't want to take your thunder, but I've, I've attended at least three of those meetings mm -hmm. where they're talking about there is really no other viable way mm -hmm. to replace the entire superstructure of the bridge mm -hmm. because, you know, we you've heard and I've heard, why can't you do it like you did at the BU right. Bridge? Right. Because right. the BU Bridge was done and that was the platform only. That was the top part of the bridge where they lifted that off and put a new one on. This is the entire structure that holds up the bridge. So those granite block caissons, this is my information. That whole thing has to be demolished. So let me wrap around back to the governor has a billion dollar surplus. Mm -hmm. I've seen where you do a bypass bridge mm -hmm. and they are called yeah, Foley bridges, I think. It's a military style temporary mm -hmm. bridge. Mm -hmm. They did it down at the Four River Bridge, mm -hmm. the shipyard. Mm -hmm. If Charlie Baker has $10 billion, ask him for some of that money to do a temporary, temporary. at a minimum, right. a temporary pedestrian bicycle bridge. Um, that, that's my pitch That's to you. your pitch. It's not a and bad I'll one. I'll give the same pitch have, to the other state you reps. Should. Okay. We have tried. There was a, uh, I know the working group who works on, right. the, the volunteers from the community who work on this, they do incredible work, you know, bringing the voice of the community to the GLX team. There was a proposal for a, um, a utility bridge and trying to make right. that, a, and um, apparently it's not strong enough to actually uh, keep the weight of what needs to um, be supported for a bridge like that. So I'm open to any good ideas. We can ask the governor. Um, I, and that's Tell the governor next time you see him, because I, I, I know you're good friends with the governor, yes. yep, as the entire state delegation is. Say, look, at Lynchy said, okay. at okay. a minimum, okay. put in a pedestrian and bicycle bridge. Okay. It's not going to cost you ten okay. a, a billion dollars. So if I tell him you, you said it, we're going to be good? Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. Now you know why Charlie okay. Baker has yeah. never been yeah. on this show, because yeah. he's yeah. slightly afraid. Um, but I wanted to get your take on the, um, the Green Line. You're hearing the same thing in Medford yeah. that 
our reps here and our um, elected officials are here and here. No one likes the fact that that bridge is going to be out of commission no. for a year. No. Nobody. And I will definitely say uh, the challenges are spread in Medford as well as Somerville. Right. There's a detour through Medford. There's one through Somerville. Right. You know, kind of spread the pain is, is definitely what's happening. And, and But all is not lost. At the last meeting I went to, they are still exploring ways to get pedestrians and yeah. Yeah. Um, mobility and detours to try to keep it away from the neighborhoods yeah. and try to keep throughput. So yep. more to come on yes. that. Yes. But it's an issue that yes. I know you've dealt yes. with this election yes. cycle. Um, further, um, I want to thank you and Representative Provo, Senator Jalen, and Representative Conley for assisting us in getting the word, about, a word out about the FCC. The FCC took some draconian measures mm -hmm. last week in a vote uh, for Republicans, one Democrat, um, voted to start reneging, these are my words, reneging on agreements that are mm -hmm. old in terms of the funding of uh, public educational and government access channels. So I just wanted to thank you. I know it's a, it's still ongoing issue, but you guys are resolved to help us with yes. that. So thank you very well, much. Well, I want to thank you for bringing it up because um, as important as as public access is, we don't talk about it nearly enough. So thank you and the folks on your staff for bringing it to our attention. And yeah, so we're writing a letter um, opposing the uh, cuts that will be voted on. Other people can do that too, yes. right? So this yep. is the time to get comments in to the FCC. And I mean, the number of, I mean, well, the number of hearings uh, that I watch on TV, but I know that the all of those stations are used by so many in the community right. um, and people online who are watching these shows. It's an incredibly important investment um, in public access. It was funny when I said, you know, imagine the world where you won't be able to tune yeah. in here in Somerville. You won't yeah. be able to tune into um, the government channel and see the Board of Aldermen at work. Yeah. And the person that I said that to, is that a promise? <laughs> so there's a, a silver lining uh -huh. out there uh -huh. someplace, uh -huh. but uh, I can't see it because of the cuts uh -huh. that they've made. Other issues that you're going to be working on in this coming session, that should you be successful I in be successful, November? Um, in my unopposed election. Sure, there's a lot that we left on the table um, at the end of last session, and um, a lot of people know there were. Uh, some challenges as there can be in getting to the finish line. Um, I do a lot of work on health care and there is a need for our community hospitals, so places like Cambridge Health Alliance that are really struggling with their finances um, to kind of boost some of the health centers and some of the community hospitals. We didn't get there. I'm hopeful we will uh, early in January in the next session. Um, a really big issue, obviously, uh, from what's going on federally is about immigration. And um, there are some things that the state could do as far as ensuring due process and some pretty basic rights for everyone in our community. Um, we did not get there uh, in the legislature, but we've had a lot of good conversations. You know, it's a, a, a tough issue unfortunately, um, for pe some people in the state, but we're going to keep making progress, and I'm hopeful that we can really um, provide some more protections uh, for, Im for immigrants and make sure everyone in our community is safe. Let me ask you about another one of the commissions that you serve on, which is the Autism mm -hmm. Commission. Mm -hmm. um, there was recently a report that I read, is, and correct me on this number, that the diagnosed cases of autism amongst children between the ages of four and 12 yeah. is skyrocketing yeah. in this country. Any reason for that that you can pinpoint or is it amalgamation of a lot of reasons? Yeah. I, um, the folks that I work with on the commission, many who know much more about this than I do, there isn't um, a key reason that they can point to. Some of it is honestly uh, better diagnoses so what we're seeing in the adult population is a lot of people who have never been treated and never had a correct diagnosis and it's honestly much much harder when you um, get a diagnosis when you're in your 30s or 40s it's much harder to um, be treated and to um, do some of the you know typical activities and you know keep a job and things like that than it is if you're diagnosed when, when you're a kid so mm -hmm. there's much um, better diagnosis now than there was, but we are seeing um, a really marked increase. So um, we spent a lot of time in the commission talking about 
what are the healthcare needs? What are and this is a spectrum disorder. So there's all sort. There's not a one size fits all. There's right. all sorts of um, treatments that that can work. Um, and looking at uh, working across sectors with the Department of Ed, uh, Medicaid, housing, which is a huge issue now, housing mm -hmm. for people with disabilities, uh, family supports, all sorts of pieces to try to come together. So it's a great commission. It's a mix of advocates and people who work in the state trying to come up with solutions. And we actually get, get a lot done around that table. So We have an election coming up, surprise, yes. next month. Uh -huh. Next uh -huh. month. Jay Gonzalez is the yeah. nominee. Yeah. Um, is it Quentin? Quentin Palfrey. Quint Quentin yes. Palfrey uh, is the lieutenant governor nominee. Um, any chance that they could beat the popular sure. incumbent? Sure. There you go. Yes. Louder. Say I, it louder. <laughs> I, um, I would just, I did a press conference with Jay Gonzalez a week or two ago. Um, in which we were pointing out that Charlie Baker has endorsed the whole Republican state slate including people like Jeff Deal, who was the Trump uh, chair, and he's running against Elizabeth she Warren. She mentioned the name I'm on sorry. air. I'm sorry. But that's okay. That's okay. We're so, running out of time. <laughs> so what I want to say yes. before we run out of time, the website for your reelection campaign is? Yes, it is my website, which is www.christinebarber, C-H-R-I-S-T-I-N-E-B-A-R-B-E-R.com. O -R -G. And don't forget to vote on November 4th, 5th, 4th, 5th, I don't 4th, or 5th. 5th, I think. November don't forget 4th. to vote. And if you can't vote it's in person, please do it absentee. My guest has been State Representative Christine Barber from the 34th Middlesex District. As always, stay safe, stay informed. See you next time. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. We might have a little bit more time, but they're going to edit that. Um, because Can I, I not think say Trump? Yeah, you can, no, deal. <laughs> oh, we can't say deal. Yep, yeah, because I know what his politics are. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Okay. Well, be careful, because I think we're still on. Okay. I think we are. So, Jay can totally do it. Look at the wave of Democratic yeah. activism around the state. People want action. Right. Uh, people want, you know, invest in the tea, do all these things, and that's not what Charlie Baker is doing. Right. Like, there is a plan that the, that Gonzalez But it's going to be so, so difficult because he's got, really I mean, that. I, I know the polls are the polls, but he's got a 69% approval rate I know. from both sides of the aisle, I know. Republicans and Democrats, for anyone to crack that nut. And he is not your typical mm -hmm. Republican out of Washington. Well, what that means now. What that means now. now. And I think right. that's how people right. are going to vote come right. November. Is what does it mean now? now we, to be a Republican. You know, we've got, some, we've got a Republican governor who's sane. I mean, I, I'd say that. I think he's sane yeah. um, compared to what we're of seeing course, going on Of course, because you have Washington. compared to Washington. Yes, right. of course. Right. But is he where we want Massachusetts to be? I mean, think of That's all the big this. question. I mean, it's, right. yes. So, you know, what can we envision ourselves doing? And that would look very different if we had Jay Gonzalez as governor. Right. So yeah. No, as you know, Jay was on the show. Yeah. Jay was on the show. Uh, Bob Massey was before, on the show. Yes, before the... Um, governor Baker had an invite, had tried to schedule himself for sometime in um, late August. That fell through. Mm. Haven't heard anything back. So, hmm. okay. you know, I, I we'll mean, see. I try to be nonpartisan on this show, you know. Anybody who wants to come on, I've had Republican candidates, Democratic candidates, yeah. independent yeah. candidates. Um, Evan Falchuk, what was the yeah. party he was um, in? The Independent Party of America or something, something like that? Something like that. Something, yeah, independent something. Independent but, United yes, yeah. something. Yeah, 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 yeah United yeah. Independent. So, I mean, everyone's welcome to come on the show. I just don't know why the Republicans shy away from it. Yeah. Do I look Democratic yeah, to you? No, I have no <laughs> idea. No, no. Well, 54. Did yeah. I misread the whole thing? It's 54, 1954. Are we only halfway through? I did, I did misread it. No, we have um, three minutes left. All right. I did misread it. I don't know how I did that. Welcome back to Greater Somerville, <laughs> everyone. My guest is Christine Barber from the 34th Middlesex District. So let's go, let's go on. I did misread it. Sorry, guys. Um, let's go on with next session. Um, we are going into uh, midterm, midterm elections yeah. in uh, 2018. Yeah. There is a very, very good chance that the Senate could flip mm -hmm. to the Democratic mm -hmm. side. What in your mind, you're elected official, you kind of have a different perspective than I do. 
What does it mean? Does it mean stalemate in Washington continues? Or does it mean that Trump now becomes a transactional type of Thing. president? If only one, if only the one flips, not right. both. Right, right. Um, I know, I mean, I think it means it'll be easier to hold Trump accountable in a way that's not happening now. And I think, um, I think that there can be some more um, movement in that direction. But, you know, there is, there are still a lot of uh, Republicans who are hanging on in D.C. And I think it's, it'll be hard to see kind of the wholesale changes that some of us would like to see. Right. Yeah. Right. So, I wonder if there's more them. Jeff Flakes out there, though. Yeah. yeah. You know, more guys just saying, you know, this is this is not what yeah. I signed up yeah. for, yeah. because it is a circus. I yeah. mean, I can say it. You don't have to. It's a circus down there right now. Yeah. And you know, uh, Representative um, Capuano, when he was on the show, he said sometimes it takes him a day to readjust when he comes back yeah. to Massachusetts because it's so surreal what's yeah. happening down there. I think there are. Um, of course, there are moderate Republicans there. I think the question is, what do their constituents want? And right. you know, once some things are pointed out in a different way, if that changes the conversation, which mm. I'm ho hopefully will. Mm. So. Well, you know, I watched uh, last week. I watched uh, both confirmation, yeah. b both of the interviews, and then I watched um, uh, pre the president give his now famous yes. um, press conference. Yeah. And, and I just keep saying to myself, you know, I'm, I'm halfway through my life. I look at, I'm halfway through it now. I'm not gonna live to 100. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe, you, uh, maybe. Uh, but <laughs> I look at it this way, my poor grandnieces and nephews, mm -hmm. what kind of a world are we laying the groundwork? Mm -hmm. it, the, they are the inheritors of what we're doing now. They are our heirs, yeah. right? It's frightening to me. On one hand, yes, there are some very scary things happening. On the other, I mean, the real silver lining here is look at how many people are involved. The number of people who never knew who their state rep was right. or maybe didn't know who their congressperson was, and they are making phone calls, they are marching, they are learning about different issues, they're calling the FCC. You know, it. Uh, that's the heartening side for me. You know, we talk about you know how many women are running for office, and there's a lot of bright sides to this. Well, you know, I follow we're... I follow all of our elected reps on Facebook and Twitter and yes. everything else that's available to me, and I see how hard you work. So, best wishes in November, because now I can see by the clock that we have 15 seconds left. Okay. So, once again, my guest has been State Representative Christine Barber, 34th Middlesex District. As always, stay safe, stay informed. See you next time.